Welcome to uh, Save Your Money, Save Your Teeth, uh, the go-to podcast uh, where curiosity meets dentistry, straight from the experts. I'm Jan, and every week I'll be chatting with Dr. Clifford Udelman, taking a deep dive into the world of uh, dental care from a consumer's perspective. So whether you're looking to brighten that smile or protect your wallet, we've got you covered with practical advice and the latest insights. So stick around as we uncover the secrets to maintaining both your dental health and also your finances. Today we're talking about fillings. Dr. Uderman, welcome back. Hi, Jan. Great to be back on the show. Thanks for having me back. And uh, after all of our previous episodes about bad breath and about the psychological aspects of a smile and uh, the, the economics of prevention, I thought today we'll get stuck in and talk about uh, fillings. So what do you want to know? Can you uh, explain firstly to us what a filling is and why would I need it in my mouth? So fillings are to repair or to restore the integrity of your tooth. Generally, if your tooth has a cavity, so that's when you have decay on a tooth, or we use fillings if someone has chipped or uh, broken a tooth, maybe maybe from a fall or an accident. And also, these days we see a lot of erosion and we do bonded fillings. But the fillings that we're mainly speaking about today is your everyday type of filling, which is removing decay from a tooth and filling in the hole that's left behind. We'll talk about uh, the types of fillings that we use these days and how a filling's been done. Should I just carry on with um, the types of fillings? Because yeah. a lot of people ask us, Doc, uh, is it going to be a white filling or one of those black fillings or so-called silver fillings? So uh, all around the world these days, white fillings are way more popular. There are dentists in certain areas, and uh, depending on the type of practice you go to, that still do place silver amalgam in teeth so when people think of fillings we think mainly of the white ones which is composite or tooth colored and silver amalgam which is the ones that eventually go black there's also ceramic fillings which is your ceramic inlays and onlays and then things like gold which is hardly ever used uh, anymore except in south africa sometimes on front teeth And there's a few other types of fillings, which we probably will leave out today. So it's not too long today. Each of these types of fillings have got their pros and cons. Um, I think um, maybe should we start off talking a little bit about amalgam now that I've spoken Mm, about amalgam? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. So amalgam has been used for well over a century. Um, The guy that invented it was the the founding father of so-called modern dentistry, but I think that was 1.0. We're now in an in a evolution and a revolution with digital dentistry and things that come a long way. And I was still doing silver fillings when I left the United States. I was practicing in San Diego for 16 years, and I moved to Australia in 2002. And I was still placing silver fillings back in 2002 in back teeth because I wasn't so sure that white fillings had come you know, far far along enough for them to be strong enough to use in back teeth. But around about 2002, I stopped using silver fillings completely. There, there still are dentists that use silver fillings. Uh, that Silver fillings are very quick and simple to do. Uh, if you're on a medical aid, a lot of medical aids will only cover a silver filling uh, because they are cheap and, and very quick. They're not very difficult you know, there's a simplicity involved there are some pros and cons of silver fillings these days it's mainly mainly cons we see old silver fillings causing cracks in teeth and also uh, parts of teeth just breaking off when a filling gets old and of course there's the aesthetics of the actual filling and the whole tooth can go gray Uh, I'm not one of these dentists that's too overly concerned about the mercury in silver fillings. The mercury is locked into the filling. There there are some concerns in certain countries they have banned silver fillings because it contains mercury. But 
I don't think it's so much because of the mercury that the patient is getting from the filling, but when we place silver fillings, you know, we use a vacuum, a suction, and the mercury ends up in the in the ocean and it poisons the fish. And a lot of people who are concerned about mercury in their fillings probably get a lot more mercury every time they eat sushi. If you eat tuna, mm. big fish that eat little fish, there's a lot more mercury in those. But that mercury might be coming from dental practices in the first place. So that's a complex question. I mean, we're lucky that we don't get too many requests for for silver fillings anymore, (laughs) but they are still done. Okay. And what's the story here in South Africa with the the gold fillings? We see that so often uh, on front teeth. What can you tell me about this type of filling? Why is it so popular here in our country? So we do get, we do get requests. People say, do you do gold on the front tooth or or silver on the front tooth and it's a it's a cultural thing i think um people think it looks attractive i don't have any problem with people that stick a little gold star or a little gold heart or a little diamante or something on a tooth as long as the tooth is not damaged but we do see people who get the gold put on their teeth where the dentist or backstreet dentist has gone and cut the tooth or drill the tooth and then put a very inexpensive i can assure you they're not using gold it's some kind of brass or something um they're doing it purely for financial gain if any of those dentists are listening you're welcome to take out a court case against me <laughs> uh, i don't think any uh, registered dentist with the south african dental association would take a virgin tooth and put gold on a front tooth and in fact a lot of people that get that done they tend to then regret it i mean i'm even don't have a problem with someone wearing properly made grills you know you want to have flash or gold on your front teeth then maybe get a, a grill i think a lot of grills might damage teeth i haven't seen a well-made one but there are dentists in johannesburg that specialize in them and they're very um they cosmetic dentists quite highly regarded and i'm sure the grills that they make won't damage teeth but those gold slivers or whatever you want to call them i would definitely warn people against them um gold fillings i've got a gold inlay or a gold crown on one of my back molars that's been there for 30 years they do last a very long time but that's not the type of gold crown that we're talking about, yeah, is it? So the grills, why do we see these grills as well? What even is, is the purpose of the grill? Is that just like a, a bit of a statement? I was just wondering about these grills that you see nowadays. Yeah, so grills, um, are they removable. Uh, I don't think too many people get grills permanently installed. I mean, if you did have something like that put over your teeth, you would definitely get gum disease and cavities in no time and then you end up with no teeth at all. So the types of grills that I'm talking about is where uh, if, you, if you're going to have a grill made properly, these days you would use a digital scan and have a very accurate model of the teeth. And then the grill is designed in, in wax first or, or digitally printed and then that that gets cast by a jeweler and they can put real diamonds and gold and all of that. And you wear it like when you go out, you put a bracelet and some rings on or a necklace, like flashy. You know, I, I try and keep an open mind. I don't want to judge, you know, one one culture or one one group of people's idea of beauty might not match with our own. So I always try and keep an open mind. But for me, you know, the health of the, the mouth and the teeth comes first. And and so, you know, if some rapper is getting a, a million-dollar mm-hmm. grill, you can be sure he's not damaging his teeth. But someone might go somewhere in the back street and get a very cheap grill done yeah. or what they think is the same as what the rapper is getting and get completely ripped off. So since this is about save your money, save your teeth, I think you can save both your money and your teeth by taking that advice. Dr. Uniman, let's talk about that step-by-step process for dental filling. I once had a filling done and it looked like uh, the dentist was uh, busy with uh, some kind of paste and then uh, this paste later went harder. Is that correct or or how does it work? Yes, yes, yeah. So if we're talking now about where you've got a cavity between your teeth or in the groove in the top of the tooth, 
and uh, not a, a replacement filling. If it's a if it's a first time a tooth is getting a filling, normally the dentist will take those little X-rays to look between your teeth or dry your teeth and look with a magnifying loops or with a microscope or can see it on a photo. So the first step in a pro in a in a process of getting a filling is to make sure that the tooth actually needs a filling in the first place. So there sometimes can be small cavities starting between teeth and they don't always need a filling. The, the filling can be reversed or the cavity can be reversed by flossing, not, not uh, drinking acidic uh, drinks and, and you know, give, basically giving up Coca-Cola and other soft mm. drinks and using a fluoride toothpaste. And you can actually prevent fillings. I often see patients that have four or five cavities that are still small. They may need one or two that, that need a filling, but those ones that are still small, if they, if they can improve their oral hygiene, if they can follow some of the preventive measures that we've spoken to, uh, spoken about on our show before, they can make those cavities go away. But let's just say you come in and you've got a proper cavity that needs a, that needs a, a filling. The first thing we do is put some topical anesthetic on your gum and make sure your gum is nice and numb. And then at OptiSmile, we use a special machine for giving the anesthetic. It, it gives the anesthetic very, very slowly. Um, otherwise, a dentist would use a traditional dental syringe. And a lot of people are scared of getting injections in the mouth. But to be honest, if the dentist is very gentle and, and well known for being somewhat painless, they'll take their time and you really shouldn't feel an injection in your mouth more than a one out of 10. If 10 is agony and zero is nothing, when we use the machine, we often get a zero or a one. If a patient's very nervous, they might say it was a one and a half or a two, but it definitely shouldn't be agonizing. Mm. Then the idea is to let the anesthetic work for a good length of time, five to 10 minutes in many cases, and to make sure that the patient is comfortable when they're getting the cavity cleaned out and we use uh, we at Optima we use a uh, an electric or a we don't use an air motor that makes a very high pitch noise. We have special drills or hand pieces that are fairly quiet, and we use that to clean the cavity. We can use a, a decay detecting dye that we paint on the tooth and then rinse off. That shows us that all of the decay is gone. So if a dentist is in a hurry, they they sometimes don't do that step, but if it is a big cavity, it is important to make sure that nothing is left behind. And then we we smooth everything off. And then we use a blue gel, which we put on the tooth that that makes the enamel go slightly, slightly porous. So that when we rinse that off, it looks a little bit chalky. Then we paint a bond on the tooth and we blow that thin and we shine our bright light on that. And then we build the filling up one layer at a time shining the light on the filling. And at the end, we we check your bite with blue paper and we polish the filling down to make sure that the bite is not high. We'll often see patients that come where they've had a filling done somewhere else and the tooth is very sensitive and they think the filling doesn't, uh, that there's a gap and they don't know why it's so sensitive and they, they think it's a terrible filling. In the meantime, the filling doesn't look bad to us just the dentist maybe didn't see a little spot that was high and and we check it under the microscope we get that blue paper and then i use red paper and we polish it down a little and a few days later the all the pain and sensitivity is gone so the bite is very important and and a lot of dentists don't take their time to make sure the, the bite is right i often will bring a patient back the next day if they've had several fillings and i don't like to do fillings on both sides of the mouth I'll do like an upper right and lower right or upper left and lower left, but I won't do like upper right and lower left, for instance, because then you, you don't really know where the bite is and um, it's not, I don't really do it that way. Dr. Yudelman, I just quickly want to go back to the drilling process. The drilling process, does this happen before you actually put in uh, the uh, filling? Yes, so if a cavity is in the groove in the top of a tooth, which is most common in teenagers where if they haven't had enough fluoride or if they, their diet is poor or oral hygiene is poor or if the groove hasn't been sealed, you get what's called pit and fissure caries or decay. Caries is the scientific name 
And that's where the little groove starts to get decay. And we use a little diamond, a very tiny pointy diamond to clean out the groove and see where the decay is underneath the groove. And sometimes it looks like a small cavity on the top. And then once you get through the enamel, the enamel into the dentine layer, the dentine is much softer and the cavity spreads out sideways. And then we use a different polisher. It's it's almost, um, it's a round one. And that feels, you get a lot more vibration. And we use that to, to clean all the soft decay out. And when we're getting closer to where we are on fresh dentine that's not decayed, that's when we use the decay detecting solution. You make sure that all the decay is gone before you start trying to to put a, a bond and a, and a white filling. Amalgam, silver amalgam is a lot more forgiving if a dentist leaves a bit of decay under a silver amalgam. I think the mercury and the silver kind of kills that off. You can be a lot more sloppy if you're doing silver amalgam, but doing white fillings in back teeth is very meticulous. Everything has to be dry. You can't let saliva get on the tooth. One should use magnification. Um, yeah, it's a, it's quite a process. And if the cavity is between the teeth, then we obviously have to, to get to the cavity. So we drill down close to the, the edge until we find the cavity and then we clean it the same way. And that's when you need that little clamp and that piece of metal and the little toothpick or wedge that goes between the teeth so that you don't glue the teeth together. And the bigger the cavity gets, the, the longer it takes, the more technical it is. And that's why... Um, it's always better to get a, if you have a cavity and it is at a point that it needs filling, it's better to get it filled while it's still small. The longer you wait, the more complex it gets. And if you wait too long and it's getting very sensitive, you could end up with a root canal and that can get a lot more expensive. And um, in fact, we're going to be talking about root canals on our next podcast. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So uh, that's coming up, and that's a worst case scenario situation. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I've been through it, as I mentioned before, and it wasn't that great. But um, just quickly coming back to uh, the filling that's now been done, what follow up care do you recommend, Dr. Uniman, to ensure its longevity and also health of the tooth? Uh, can I still eat toffees, or uh, do you think I should rather avoid it? So, actually, that's a good question. Look, I eat toffees on the odd occasion. If they're very, very sticky, they can pull inlays and onlays and crowns out. The type of white filling that we're speaking about that's filling in a cavity is actually quite resistant. I shouldn't tell people you can, you can eat as many toffees as you want, but you, you won't pull a toffee. A toffee shouldn't pull a, a, a nicely done white filling out. But the problem with toffees is, is obviously the sugar. And if you're eating a lot of toffees, getting a lot of sugar on your teeth that can cause cavities. What's a lot worse than toffees, for instance, yesterday I had a patient who who came to see me and I, and I said, have you been eating Tic Tacs or little sweeties? And she said, actually, I've had a, uh, as you know, I'm a smoker and I've had a bit of a rough you know, throat and, I, and I've been eating um, those like halls, like cough drops. And I said, what flavor? And she said, cherry. And, you know, those are full of acid. They're basically sweets Yo. and they've got sugar in them, and they've got honey and they've got lemon and they've got glucose and, and those are like hidden sweets. And the other thing is, is if you're eating a lot of raisins and granola bars and things that have got natural sugars, you you know, those are still sugar. And if you've had a cavity on a tooth and you've got a lot of plaque, you're not brushing and flossing using a fluoride toothpaste and you've got plaque there and you're eating acid and you're eating sugar, you can get a, another cavity on the same tooth. That's called recurrent caries or recurring decay. And it's not that the filling wasn't done properly. It's just the the bacteria and the cavity is going to attack the weak spot. It's like the it's like the grouting on a tile, you know, between tiles. Uh, it's all waterproof, but if the grouting starts to go, the water is going to seep in there. And if you remove the tiles, it'll be all rotten underneath. Okay, so then obviously, do I need to come, uh, like after the uh, filling now, uh, anything I should do or shouldn't do in the following hours uh, after that filling's been done? Yeah, don't bite your lip, don't bite your tongue, don't bite your cheek. In oh, fact, just have a smoothie or something until the, yeah. the anesthetic wears off. Be careful 
especially because of the anesthetic. If you've had anesthetic on the lower, your tongue can feel all thick and numb. And we see people who come back in the next day for us to check their filling and they've bitten their tongue because they didn't listen. Mm-hmm. Um, no, once the filling is set, uh, we shine a special light on it and we built it up in layers. By the time you leave, it's as strong as it's going to be. If if you're getting a silver filling done, that's a different story. The silver filling, by the time you leave, it's only about 60 or 70% hardened. You know, the dentist scratches around a little bit on the top to scrape off a bit of silver that goes down the suction. And in South Africa, most dentists don't have what's called an amalgam separator. So it goes straight into the wastewater, straight into the ocean, and it poisons all the fish. That's a good reason why we don't, you know, do amalgams anymore. And also at OptiSmile, we have an amalgam separator that removes the amalgam when we're taking out old silver fillings. And that uh, concludes uh, today's discussion on fillings. Uh, Dr. Yuleman, thank you uh, so much uh, once again to you for sharing your expertise with us. And uh, we really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. And of course, the best filling to get is to not get any fillings at all. So listen to our podcast on prevention. Make sure you're flossing. Don't do all the stuff that causes cavities in the first place and if you have a cavity that's starting double check with the dentist say to them do i really need to get this filled now is there any way if i improve my habits and all of that that i can actually have you check it in six or 12 months and see if it's maybe stabilized because the best filling is no filling at all yeah and if you don't have any uh, fillings in your mouth i think you're very very lucky in this day and age uh, <laughs> but uh, you are it's better than a root canal uh, next week we'll be talking about uh, a root canal so stay tuned for that and also remember while we strive to provide valuable insights always consult with your own dental professional for advice tailored to your personal health and uh, then don't forget to subscribe for more enlightening discussions Join us again next week as we continue to explore the fascinating intersection of dental health and also financial savvy. Until then, keep smiling and taking great care of your teeth. Discover the world of dental excellence with OptiSmile. Join us for a weekly podcast featuring Dr. Clifford Udelman, a seasoned expert with 40 years of dental experience across four continents. Gain unique insights and expert dental advice by visiting OptiSmile.co.za for articles that illuminate the path to optimal oral health. If you're seeking unparalleled dental care in Cape Town, get in touch with OptiSmile or book directly online on OptiSmile.co.za. OptiSmile, where global expertise meets local care.